sinful humanity. To be saved, we must acknowledge our separation from God and that we are hopeless without His help. Here's Dr. Gene Getz to explain. When you look at that principle, uh, you might have a question. How does that principle come from the, the Book of Lamentations? Well, I think that what you see here in relationship to Jerusalem, the judgment that came on Jerusalem, and then God's mercy on Jerusalem, is really a story of sinful humanity, particularly what happened to the people of Jerusalem when they didn't follow the will of God. It led to serious judgment. So that's relationship between this book and this principle relative to our acknowledging our separation from God, and that we, we really are hopeless without God's help. And that, of course, is where God's grace comes in. Now there are some who question whether or not Jeremiah wrote the book of Lamentations. And it's a valid question. However, it's very interesting that we have the introduction to what is called the Septuagint. Now the, the Septuagint is a Greek translation that was done by seventy Hebrew scholars. They translated from Hebrew into Greek. And the word Septuagint in Latin means seventy. And so it's referring to those seventy Jewish scholars. And at the introduction of the translation, here's what they said. Now this is not a part of the script from the book, but it's an introduction. And it came to pass after Israel was taken captive and Jerusalem was made desolate that Jeremiah sat weeping and lamented with this lamentation over Jerusalem. That was the introduction by these seventy scholars, seventy Jewish scholars. And I'm inclined to take their word <laughs> that indeed Jeremiah was the one who wrote this book. It was, it's the lamentations, the lamenting of Jeremiah after the fall of Jerusalem. Now let me point out uh, something very interesting here, and that is that it's a poetic book. And it's, it's rather marvelous because uh, it has a, a structure, particularly in four of the chapters. And Jeremiah used uh, an acrostic that is built on the Hebrew alphabet. When we think of uh, the English alphabet, for example, we have 26 letters, A, B, C, D, and so forth. And in the Hebrew alphabet, there are 20 letters, Aleph, Bet, Gimel, Dalet, and so forth. Now what you're going to have is that, for example, in chapter 1, you're going to have 22 verses that are built on this acrostic, which is really rather fascinating and rather beautiful. So let's take a look at this lament over Jerusalem. For example, beginning in Lamentations 1.1, based on the first letter in the Hebrew alphabet, Aleph. How she sits alone, the city once crowded with people. She who was great among the nations has become like a widow. The princess among the provinces has been put to forced labor. It's interesting that here he uses um, uh, pronouns that are feminine. And also uh, he actually uses illustrations that are feminine. And as I was just thinking through that, my mind simply jumped ahead to the New Testament where we as the body of Christ are called the bride of Christ with that feminine pronoun, beautiful pronoun. Here, obviously, it's relating to Jerusalem. Then you have another verse. You have bet. That's the second letter of the Hebrew alphabet. She weeps aloud during the night with tears on her cheeks. And obviously, uh, Jeremiah could identify with that because he's called the weeping prophet. He literally wept over Jerusalem. He continues, there is no one to offer her comfort, not one from all of her lovers. And there, that could refer to Jerusalem and Judah and Israel's spiritual adultery. 
they left one true God to commit adultery, spiritual adultery, and of course, literally, very guilty of, of serious immorality. And in this moment, in this distress, in this horrible situation, no one listened, not even her lovers, which would refer to those who turned against them. And notice it says, all her friends have betrayed her. They have become her enemies. So Jeremiah is, is weeping, he's mourning, he's lamenting over this city that has been destroyed by the Babylonians. You go a little further down to verse 12, you have the twelfth letter of the Hebrew alphabet, the Med. And here we have now Jerusalem speaking back to those who are walking by, as it were. Is this nothing to you? And this is where you see that change in verse 12 to the end of the chapter. Is this nothing to you, all of you who pass by? Look and see, is there any pain like mine? which was dealt out to me, which the Lord made me suffer on the day of His burning anger." So here you have a picture lamenting over the city of Jerusalem. Now, what happened to Judah? What happened to Jerusalem? I personally feel it's a picture of humanity. It's a picture of, of human nature. It's a picture of all those who reject God's wonderful plan of salvation through faith in Jesus Christ. And here we see a downward spiral as well. And you can correlate this with Romans chapter 1, where when they no longer retain God in their knowledge, which they didn't, those in Judah, they turned away from God. And then you see this incredible downward spiral into evil and into sin. And that's really what Paul describes in Romans chapter 1. So I believe that we do have a picture here of humanity, but we all also have the good news of Jesus Christ in the story of redemption, the coming of Jesus Christ. And God will not turn a deaf ear to people who cry out to Him in the midst of their sin and their pain. We're living in the day of grace. And the fascinating thing is, if we jump all the way to eternity, there's going to be a new Jerusalem to replace the old Jerusalem. Now, I believe there will be a rebuilt Jerusalem probably in the millennium. There will be some unique things happen, but at the end of time, there's going to be a new Jerusalem. And we read about this in the book of Revelation, chapter 21. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. There he's speaking now of the heavens and the earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea no longer existed. And as I thought about that, if, if the he heavens uh, disappear and the whole earth disappears, does that mean the totality of what exists in space? God obviously created it all. I, I can't get my head around that. But the fact is that what John saw in this vision, I also saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared like a bride adorned for her husband. In other words, this is the place of eternity with Jesus Christ. No tears, uh, no need of light, because God is the light. And this is an incredible picture of eternity and what God has for those who turn to Him by faith and accept the gift of eternal life. We've all sinned. We've all fallen short of the glory of God. The wages of that sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. In light of that story, and that's really the redemptive story, the story of the Bible, why do some people have to reach a state of utter helplessness before they acknowledge their sins and receive God's gift of salvation? Well, I think it goes back to pride. It goes back to ignorance. It certainly goes back to the environment that deteriorates, that promotes 
a lifestyle that is out of the will of God. We have examples of that. We have pagan examples that pe bring people down. We see this illustrated in Israel. We see it illustrated in Judah. We see it illustrated in the kings and their sinful behavior. The priests and the leaders were bad examples which brought people down ultimately to destruction and to God's judgment. And I believe this is a tremendous challenge to all of us who live in this day of grace, particularly as parents, to bring up our children and nurture in the admonition of the Lord so they don't start down this path, so they don't follow that propensity, that sin nature that we all have, but rather follow the example of us as parents until they're enlightened by the Spirit of God to understand what it means to receive Jesus Christ as personal Savior. Think of Proverbs 22, 6. Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he's old, he will not depart from it. So here's the principle that comes, I believe, from Lamentations. To be saved, we must acknowledge our separation from God and that we are hopeless without His help. And the good news is, whosoever calls on the name of the Lord will be saved.